I wish you bluebirds in the spring to hear your song, a song to sing, and then a kiss more than this. I wish you love. Welcome to the Forgiveness Solution Podcast. I'm Reverend Misty Time. I'm so glad that you could join us today. You can find me at revmisty.com. Also on Facebook at Reverend Misty. Please send me your forgiveness questions at revmisty at outlook.com. And please send me your forgiveness stories. I'd love to hear them. Today, we are going to talk about expectations, hopes, and dreams. Those fantasies that we all live our life with. And why we do that. Why do human beings put such big expectations, not just on ourselves, but other people? And what happens when we do? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or is it just part of being human? And if we do, does it cause unforgiveness? Well, yes, it does. But can we avoid it? Well, I don't think we can. And I'll tell you why, at least in my opinion. And again, I'd love to hear from you. And let me know if you think that is also the case. Well, let's get started. If we're going to start, let's start with some exercise. Don't worry, you don't have to put on your tennis shoes. Unless you already have them on and you're jogging, please continue. But if you don't, just relax. Also, no pen and paper are required. Just your beautiful mind. So let's get going. All right, when it comes to expectations, I want you to think of someone. Uh, and this someone... I want you to think of the person that has exceeded your expectations, that person that has gone above and beyond in your life. Now, that person should be someone who has a relationship with you in some way or another. Yep, a friend, a coworker, a parent, a sibling, a romantic relationship, heck, even a perfect stranger, some type of relationship. Oops, I guess that would be anyone. Yep, somebody, though, that has exceeded your expectations. Yep, do you have that person in your mind? I know I do. Yep, I'm pretty lucky. I can pick from a lot of different people who've signed up for something in my life and have done more than I ever expected them to do. All right, you have your person, I have my person. Great. Now we're going to flip the coin. We have to go to the other side. We have to think about somebody who has not exceeded our expectations, who signed up for something in our life and didn't do so well, who didn't meet the expectation we set for them or society set for them. They just didn't meet up. They didn't hit the line of acceptable. It was probably because they didn't have the will or the skill, but we're going to get to that. Can you think of that person? I know I can think of a couple in my life and it makes me really sad, but Yep, I got the person in my head. Do you? All right. So when we were thinking about the person who exceeded our expectations, how did you feel? It made me feel happy. It made me proud. It made me almost giddy. I was so just taken by the fact that there are people who will do more than is expected of them. That their job title might have been friend, but they did so much more, I call them family or a family member that would do, they would lay down their life for you. That person, pretty amazing. Or maybe even a coworker that stepped up and helped you at your job because they just did it because it was the right thing to do, because they saw you struggling. Maybe it was a teacher or a preacher, somebody who did something when you were hurting. It's just amazing how many people will exceed expectations but it made you feel good inside when you thought about that person, didn't it? Now, let's think about the other person, somebody in your life that didn't meet expectations. How did that make you feel? I know it makes my heart hurt. It makes me sad, not just for them, but for me. For whatever they did, it really hurt my feelings. It makes me feel, oh, like, like why? I want to ask them why. Because I thought that they could meet those expectations and they either chose not to or maybe they just didn't have the ability to. I'm not sure sometimes, but they weren't able to do it. And it makes me, sometimes it makes me really angry and I can feel it in my body. 
That's really how we pick up unforgiveness. It really, really is. That's really what expectations can do. They can both make us happy and sad. But that's what we do to other people, and that's what we do to ourselves. In every situation, all day long, spoken and unspoken, is all about expectations. We do it when we go to a restaurant. We have expectations of the wait staff that they will serve us because that's their job and that they will do it in a certain amount of time and with a certain amount of friendliness. And if they don't, we tip them accordingly. Sometimes we take into consideration different things that are going on. Sometimes we don't. But the point is that expectations are put on us and we put them on other people. Sometimes we state our expectations, but most of the time we don't. Now, you have those two people in your head, the person that has exceeded your expectations and the person that didn't meet your expectations. Great. Now, I want you to just keep those names in your head and we're going to move on. Don't worry. We're going to refer to those a little bit later. Now, as we get started, there's something else I want you to think about. We're going to think about expectations, hopes, and dreams and how they intertwine with each other. Okay? So we're going to make three magical buckets. We're going to make an expectation bucket, a hope bucket, and a dream bucket. Okay, you got it? Perfect. As we get started, we're going to start with the expectation bucket. All right? And to start with the expectation bucket, I went to good old Webster's Dictionary. And I'm going to read the definition of expectations. All right, what did Webster have to say? Webster said that expectations is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Now, I would like to change that up just a little bit. Let's talk about that. I'm going to reread it. I'm going to rephrase it. I'm going to say expectations is a strong belief that someone or something will happen in the future. Now, think about that. Think about the people that we had in our head. We had the idea that we had this expectation that they would do something for us or be something to us in the future. Now, when I'm talking about the future, it could be a minute from now, two minutes from now, two hours from now, or in our lifetime. If I have a friend, I hope, I'm hoping, that they will be in my life forever, right? So that's really what an expectation is. We have roles that we play. And when somebody signs up to be in our life, whatever they choose they, to be, we have expectations that they will fulfill certain things in our life. And when they don't, we tend to pick up unforgiveness. And that's what we're going to talk about in regards to expectations. Isn't it great when they fulfill an expectation and when we fulfill an expectation for them when it goes back and forth, but it's really sad when expectations aren't fulfilled on either side. Right. All right. So we have our expectation bucket and we have our dreams bucket and our hope bucket. So we're still sticking in the expectation bucket because I really want to talk about relationships here because I think this is the piece that gets us in the most trouble. All right. So we're going to talk about the person that didn't meet your expectations. All right. You know, all right. I know your body's reacting already. I can feel it in my heart and in my soul. I know I'm thinking about a family member for me that didn't meet an expectation. For me, it was my twin brother. He did not meet my expectation of a brother. I don't know why, but He's my brother. So both in society terms and in my heart, I expected him to be a certain type of brother. Not only was he my twin brother, so it didn't help that every TV show with twins had secret telepathy going on, and we in the heck did not have that going on. But I expected him to be closer than even an average brother. I wanted him to be my best friend. And we were far from that. We could barely... When we grew up, we didn't even hang out in the same room together. We saw everything different in life. 
we were very different human beings. And he also had really some tough issues in life. And he wasn't going to take any advice from this girl. So my expectation was, wow, he did not meet any of them. He wasn't. He didn't act the way I wanted my brother to act. He didn't live his life the way I wanted him to be. A whole bunch of things. Now, did I speak those expectations to him? No, I didn't. Now, did I have a bad attitude about it? Sure, I did. Wasn't very nice of me. So, bad feelings were built up between both of us. Yeah, and my heart hurt. My heart hurt a lot, and I was very sad. But it came out as anger and resentment and a whole bunch of unforgiveness. And that unforgiveness was built up over time because of bad behavior from his part, a lot of bad behavior on his part, and some bad behavior on my part that had to do with, you know, not being a very nice sister. I'm not saying that all siblings are nice to each other, but we really, hmm, we really weren't nice to each other. So what do you do about that? Well, it probably would have gone a lot better had we had the maturity and the ability to express our expectations. If I would have been able to tell him that this was my expectation, I really wanted you to be a, a brother that we could have shared things and been closer. But the question was, did he have the will to meet those expectations? And did he have the skill to meet those expectations? So let's back up to the person you're thinking about. The person that you're thinking about, did they have the will to meet your expectations? Did they know your expectations? And did they have the skill to meet your expectations? Now I'm going to use my brother as an example, and I want you to think about the person that you're thinking about. I know that my brother, because I know him very well, didn't necessarily have the skill to meet my expectations. He had a lot of issues. He had a lot of his own pain. And he had some DNA issues. Like, he had some issues in his life he, that he was born with. He just could not function in life as well as I did. And I didn't really take that into account at the time. Then he became an alcoholic. He did not have the skill to deal with life in the same way. But I didn't really care about that. I was still working on my expectations. Now, did he have the will to meet my expectations? Really, he did want to be part of my life. He really, really did. Unfortunately, I did not want to hear that. Now, did he want to meet my expectations to the level that I wanted him to? He did not have the will to meet them in the way I wanted them to be met. But we didn't even have a chance to come halfway because we couldn't speak those. We did not come to a place where I could say, this is my expectation. And, this, and he wasn't able to say this was his expectation. So it just didn't happen that way. And unfortunately, he's passed away now. And we can never come together and come and have that feeling and be able to meet each other's expectations even halfway. So it's not necessarily about lowering your expectations. It's about understanding where each person is. Are they able to, to meet each other? Do, they do you have the will and the skill? Do they have the will and the skill? Some people are, are really skilled and have a lot of will, and other people are not. So that's what I'm really talking about in the expectation bucket. So I have a really funny quote. And when you're thinking about your person, I hope that that helps um, when I'm talking about expectations. And I'm, I'm sitting here looking for my quote, so I hope I can find it. If not, I'm just going to move on. Um, oh, here it is. Here's my great quote. All righty. This one's from Pamela Anderson, you know, Baywatch days. It is great to be a blonde with low expectations, it's very easy to surprise people. I thought that was hilarious. All right, we're going to talk more, a little bit more about really fun, having good expectations on people and, and when to have high expectations and all that. Don't lower your expectations. Just understand where people are. That's what I want to say. All right, so we're going to move on from the expectation bucket and we're going to go on to the hope bucket. 
I love hope. Don't you love hope? Hope is amazing. God gave us hope. Why did God give us hope? Well, I think God gave us hope so we can get the heck out of bed, don't you think? Because I know there are days. Girlfriend, don't you think there are some days where you do not want to get out of bed? Yes, sirree. Well, we have hope for tomorrow. We have hope that tomorrow will be a better day. And the reason we do that is so we can get out of bed. We have hope that we will learn from what we have gone through. And there's nothing worse than losing hope. When we don't know what's going to happen and everything looks bleak and terrible. We need hope. And that's what the hope bucket is. <laughs> hope is full and amazing and wonderful. And we need hope. Hope helps our expectations, right? We have great expectations for ourselves. And the reason we do, even when something has crashed and burned, right, when, when things haven't gone well with our expectations, we can raise our expectations again because of hope. Isn't that awesome? See, I have hope that I have learned from my bad experiences. So when I meet someone and the expectation doesn't go well, that I can now have hope that I know how to deal with it. See, that's what hope does. I have hope. I also have hope in spirit and in God and how things are going to turn out. I have hope. Yes, we have hope for tomorrow. So yes, my hope bucket is very, very full. And my hope definition, again, back to Webster's, is right here. So hope, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. All right, so that kind of brings us back to where hope and expectation kind of intertwine. Yes, so we have hope for an expectation. I think about planning a vacation. I know I love to plan a vacation. I love to search my plane tickets. I love to look at all the hotel possibilities. All that, isn't it just so much fun? Oh, I have hope that I will have the best vacation I've ever had. Why? Because it's fun to hope about everything. I know I'm going to get the best hotel. I'm going to have the best flight. And it's just going to be amazing. Why? That's my expectation that it's going to be the best vacation ever. And I have hope that it's all going to work out great. We need that hope. God put that hope in us. Right? So that's our hope bucket. That's where hope and expectations collide together. All right. We're going to move on to our third bucket, our dreams bucket. What is that? I think our dreams bucket is as big as our expectations bucket, if not bigger, because our ability to dream is what makes everything happen. That's why we went to the moon, right? Somebody dreamed it up. We were able to go to the moon. That's how everything happens. That's why human beings are so amazing, because we can dream it all. But what does that mean in regards to expectations? Well, we have all these hopes and expectations, but we have filled it up with our dreams. But what does that mean in regards to people? Well, we put a lot of these dreams, like we lay there and we think about that. If you think about our vacation that we've been planning, we have expectations of the best vacation ever. We have hope that we get the best hotel room. And we've dreamed that this vacation is like, the most amazing vacation we'll ever have, ever. And we know what the cocktail is going to look like as we sit on the beach, right? We, we've dreamed about this vacation forever, whether it's a trip to Italy or a trip to Hawaii or whether it's a trip to the mountains camping. We know that this vacation is, we've, we've dreamed about every single piece of it. That's where the dream piece comes in. And that's how we make things happen. When we dream it, that's how our body turns it and makes it into action. Isn't that awesome? But when we put all of that on one other person and we don't express it correctly, that's a lot of pressure. So let's go back to that person that didn't live up to your expectation, okay? I know I'm spending a lot of time on the person that didn't live up to your expectation instead of the person that did and overshot them because they did. Isn't that great? And I'm so glad. But this is the Forgiveness Solution Podcast. We're talking about the things that you need to let go of, those ugly feelings. And it's usually because somebody let you down. So we're going to go back to that person. If they had anything to do with your hopes and dreams and your expectations, those are the people we need to talk about. So I'm going to go back to my brother. 
I had dreams and hopes that he would be this most amazing brother. I had dreams that we would be so close our whole life, that we would be these twins. Everybody would say, oh my gosh, they're twins. When actually, most of my friends did not even know that I had a twin brother. I was embarrassed by him. And isn't that just terribly sad? He didn't live up in my dream world. That wasn't the dream that really happened. So my hope was one thing, my expectation was one thing, and he didn't live in my dream world. I put a lot of pressure on myself and him. And I didn't take into account the pain that he carried or his life path. And that's where I could bring in forgiveness. And luckily, I have been able to forgive him for so much because I've been able to see him in a different light. What his expectations were of me, what his expectations were for his life, what his hopes and dreams might have been. And that way, we were able to come together briefly and, and share as we were both taking care of our own mother as she was dying. And at least we had a little bit of together time. And uh, my heart swells at knowing that we had a little bit of together time before um, she died. And then he died soon after, unexpectedly. So understand that when you have expectations, hopes, and dreams, that they are your expectations, hopes, and dreams. And they are amazing. But that we need to be kind and helpful and understanding when we're putting that on other people and our relationships. Because lots of times our expectations are unspoken and we put them on other people and situations. And we need to kind of put a dose of reality in there sometimes. Not that our dreams aren't what make us put ourselves into action and make amazing things come true. Because I know that you're dreaming about graduating from college, having the most amazing job ever, inventing something never heard of, writing a book, doing all those things. Those dreams are what make your hope bucket spill over and help you put expectations on yourself. But don't beat yourself up if those expectations are a little bit too high for yourself. You can, you can always add more hope and, and continue to put your dreams in there. And forgive yourself a little bit or forgive somebody else. Well, that's been our exercise today. And I really hope that you learned something about expectations, hopes, and dreams. And please, for the person who exceeded your expectations in your life, please tell them. Send them a little note and say, you exceeded my expectations and thank you. And for the person who hurt you and didn't um, meet your expectations, ask yourself, did they have the will or the skill to meet your expectations? Did they know about your expectations? And if they did, again, ask yourself, is it from their own inability to meet those expectations? They might be hurting also. And maybe forgiveness needs to sneak in there. Well, this has been Reverend Misty Time. Thank you for joining me at the Forgiveness Solution Podcast. Until next time, we'll see you here at Sacred Stories. Please subscribe and like us. I wish you bluebirds in the spring To hear your song, a song to sing And then a kiss more than this I wish you love